Well, Welcome to your online coffee break, where we discuss bite-sized topics that inspire, educate, and entertain. Here's your host, a software innovator, award-winning marketer, and astronomy and space buff, Chuck Fields. Hello, thanks for joining me today for your online coffee break. Well, folks, SpaceX did it again. Last week, they had the successful historic mission of the first commercial flight of the Falcon Heavy. This was carrying the Arabsat 6A communication satellite. And it was a very successful flight. I'm happy to say that I was able to cover the site as a member of the media. And over the next few minutes, I'm going to take you behind the scenes with me so you can see some of the sites we saw and meet some of the very interesting people I met on this historic mission of SpaceX Falcon Heavy. Online Coffee Break. Well, folks, one of the exciting things about covering a mission like this is not only, of course, getting behind the scenes of the rocket, but also seeing some of the wonderful people that you meet along the way. And I'm happy to have run into a familiar face. Um, at Jamie Grow, I met uh, actually last summer for this year's 15 resupply mission to the space station. Uh, we've kept in touch, and she was here covering this mission. Uh, she's a fifth grade teacher, and here's what she's going to use this mission for to help out the students in her classroom. All right, Jamie, here we are at the Falcon Heavy launch. It's going to occur tonight. Yes, it is. Um, you're a teacher, fifth grade students. I am. What would you say to them is most important about this launch? Um, most importantly about this launch is that it's a step to the future, is what I would say, because this is a moment in history that has never happened before. And since this is a first commercial launch, um, it's giving the opportunity to open it up to anybody who wants to use a rocket to send anything to space pretty much so hopefully we can send that to Mars and eventually you know expand into the future that would be awesome what are you most looking forward to about this launch uh, I'm most looking forward to getting a photo from the camera that I'm setting on the launch pad nice. <laughs> because it's my first time doing that setting it on an actual launch pad leaving it for hours and on end and then coming back to try to capture some things a part of history yes. so that's what I'm most looking forward to because that's what my anxiety has been about for the last week <laughs> <laughs> Wow, Jamie wasn't the only one excited about setting up the cameras at the launch pad. I was too, and I was just as anxious as she was. You only get one shot to do it right, and you're not near the camera when it goes off. Obviously, the camera is pretty close to the launch pad, and we as people are about three or four miles away. You can't set your camera on a timer because launch windows change. Um, so you use what's called a sound trigger. That I explained in an earlier episode, but I'll explain now real briefly, is that when the rockets get to a certain sound threshold, uh, the trigger will automatically start your camera taking pictures. But your camera's got to be uh, perfectly still. The tripod's got to be solid. Uh, its focus has got to be solid as well. The power is on for at least 24 hours, sometimes longer. And you're hoping this is only the second time the Falcon Heavy is ever gone up. You're hoping your exposure settings are right. And uh, so what you find is there's a lot of other experienced rocket photographers out there. And I was very fortunate to run into a very popular one, Eric Kuna, uh, outside launch pad 39A. And here's what he had to say about his plans for this launch. All right, Eric, here we are. We got Falcon Heavy. Not yeah. quite vertical yet, Not but yet. Uh, you're about the best photographer for rockets I've ever seen. Can I ask you just real quick? I don't quick? know about that, but thanks. You're pretty Appreciate good. It. What got you started in this? Uh, you know, i just really interested in photography. Well, I've always been interested in photography in general um, and doing photography all the time. But really, at the end of the day, with space flight, you know, needing to push us to getting back to exploring, getting back to venturing out there in the stars, I just, I really get excited about that. So I wanted to do this to kind of share this experience with, with more people, you know, through photography you know, through photography, video, like we do, you know, so. Well, I tell you, well, your results are incredible. I understand not to get into too many details, but you have something kind of exciting planned for this one. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? I do. I, well, so I am experimenting with a older camera. I'm actually going back in time uh, and using a faster mechanical shutter, trying to freeze the flames that are coming out. Ooh, nice. I mean, it, you really can't, but I'm just trying to see, like, uh, the camera I've got is going up to one sixteen thousandth wow. of a second. So That's trying to really freeze, freeze the flame. Okay. For our fans out there who want to see the results of your amazing work, how can they find you? Oh, just Eric Kuna, E-R-I-K-K-U-N-A, at Eric Kuna, ericuna.com, just me. Excellent. Yeah. Eric, thanks for your time. Yeah. Appreciate it. No, no problem.
Now, one of the lesser-known facts about SpaceX rockets is they are actually stored horizontally at the launch pad until just a few hours before launch. Well, for most of the morning, as we were touring around Launch Complex 39A on the bus with other photographers uh, to the various vantage points to set up our cameras, the Falcon Heavy was stored horizontally. But halfway through the morning, we were in for a special treat. The rocket started moving towards the vertical position. Now, this entire process only takes about seven minutes, so we were pretty excited. And right about that time is when we ran to an old friend of ours, everyday astronaut Tim Dodd. Of course, I had to ask him what his thoughts were on this mission for Falcon Heavy. Tim, here we are, man. Falcon Heavy is on the rise. Yeah, it's literally going vertical as we speak, and we're kind of getting uh, moved around here, but yeah, it's really cool to watch it get ready to launch. I was going to ask, just what is going through your head right now? I can't wait. I mean, this is this one is going to be awesome because I'm going to be over at the causeway, so I'll be about uh, seven kilometers, uh, four miles away, basically, uh, from the landing, so that should be Amazing, the dual booster simultaneous landing. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. And you are going to have your pictures at everydayastronaut.com, right? Yes, I'll have some there and mostly just all over, you know, Twitter and all that stuff, wherever I, wherever I can. We'll check out. Hey, good luck. Thanks so much for doing yeah, something. Of course, of course. Enjoy. Well, one of the most beautiful things about covering a launch is coming to the press site. And if you're watching right now on YouTube, you can see the beautiful vehicle assembly building behind me. I'm going to turn the camera and show you. In the distance behind me, you can see the press site itself. There's all kinds of uh, photographers getting set up, news vans, and everything for tonight's upcoming launch. It's really exciting. And then just opposite the press site, uh, it's behind me, it's kind of hard to see, is the actual Falcon on launch pad 39A. Again, that's the infamous launch pad that was used for all the Apollo missions and all the space shuttle missions as well. So that's a very historic launch pad. It's gonna be amazing for this flight. Now, what's so special about it? Well, this is only the second flight ever of the Falcon Heavy. Um, some of you may remember quite well, last year the Falcon Heavy carried Starman along with the uh, Tesla of Elon Musk into space, uh, well beyond the orbit of Mars, I believe. And that was a, a incredible thing, but it was a demonstration mission. What's special about this one is for one, it's a commercial flight. So they have a paying customer, Arabsat. They're sending out a communication satellite, but also the rocket itself has changed. It's not the Block 5 configuration, which means the boosters are highly reusable uh, compared to the Block 4 versions. Also, this rocket is 10% more powerful than the first Falcon, another plus. Um, also, this time they're going to, again, attempt to land all three boosters. Now, last year, in February 2018, they landed two boosters successfully on land at Cape Canaveral, but the booster uh, at sea, unfortunately, did not land. It crashed before being able to, to land on the ship, which is called, of course, I Still Love You. I love that name. Uh, so they're going to try that again. Um, we're going to board a bus in a few minutes and drive down to the causeway, which will present us with a better view of landing sites one and two at Cape Canaveral, so we can hopefully see the two boosters come in for a landing. Um, it's going to be amazing. We're looking forward to that. So we're definitely hoping for the trifecta for SpaceX to have a successful return of all three boosters for this mission. Now, one of the most fascinating aspects that we got to do on this launch again is to place our cameras near the launch pad. And uh, you may have followed along just a few weeks ago. I published my episode on the SpaceX Crew Dragon mission where I was able to put a camera at the launch pad for the first time ever. So this time I came a little bit more prepared. I have two this time. One inside the perimeter fence uh, and then one outside the fence. Uh, so what's the difference? Well, obviously the one inside the fence is a little bit closer. The disadvantage is we have to wait um, until the next day after launch to retrieve that camera. The one outside the fence is still pretty darn close, uh, closer than the humans can get to watch. Uh, and that one I will get to pick up the photos uh, and then pick up the camera after launch, uh, within an hour or two after launch. Anyway, uh, again, set, the camera setup went great. Obviously, the launch was delayed the first night, uh, but what we got to do as a special treat is to go back out this morning to refresh any batteries and just double check the settings. And that came in particularly handy for me because I, I had a little bit more problems yesterday with the tripods than I uh, imagined. I, I brought a tripod that uh, is sort of the weakest link in the equation. I, I tested the cameras up and down, but of course I thought, well, it's just an extra tripod. How, how can that create any problems at all? Well, until I went to use it and I found out that it had some 
uh, sort of some bad joints, so to speak, where it wouldn't stay steady in certain certain areas. So uh, I was a little bit concerned, but this morning uh, my fears were alleviated. It was still aimed properly, uh, but I was able to use some tape and even tape it down, make it even more sturdy for the launch. Uh, hopefully the photos will be <laughs> turning out okay. We'll see uh, later on in this broadcast. Now, one of the interesting decisions that we got to make was to watch the launch at either the press site or travel a little bit farther away and go to what's called the causeway, where we would have a much better chance of seeing the boosters landing. Uh, I actually toyed around this for a little bit uh, because I knew the uh, press site is only about three miles away from the launch of a Falcon Heavy, which should have been an incredible experience. Uh, but again, the causeway with the boosters coming down is something that I had never experienced before. So I opted to get on the bus uh, with a bunch of other photographers, and we went to the causeway, uh, which was about four miles away from where the boosters were supposed to land. All right, well, it's T minus 60 minutes now to the launch of Falcon Heavy, ArabSat 6A. We're excited. Uh, we have changed positions now. Uh, we have moved to the NASA Causeway, which is a little bit farther away from the launch pad. Uh, that if you're watching, you can see behind me. The reason we moved here, though, is it's going to give us a better view of the landing of the two boosters. Um, which will be in Cape Canaveral, landing zones one and two. Should occur about seven minutes after liftoff. We'll see what happens. Well, moving to the causeway was an excellent choice. As you can see, if you're watching now, Nine, I'm showing eight, the SpaceX video seven, with my video from our site as an inset. Four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Now, just seven minutes after that incredible launch, we had the boosters come down for a wonderful landing at Cape Canaveral. A special treat, right as they touched down, the sounds from the sonic boom reached our ears, creating even more excitement than we could possibly imagine. <laughs> Wow, after that exciting launch, uh, of course, seeing the boosters come down to make a landing like that is something I will never forget. But we were obviously very excited to get our cameras back. And again, the way this works is we were able to go get our cameras that were outside the perimeter fence that evening. So we took a bus back from the causeway back to the press site, got on another bus uh, a little bit later, and then went out to retrieve our cameras. Of course, it was getting a little bit dark around then. Bugs were biting. Um, but I finally retrieved my camera. Uh, only to discover that that particular camera in that location uh, missed the rocket entirely. The pictures didn't start taking until the rocket had cleared uh, the frame, cleared the tower. I was a little disappointed with that. Uh, as near as I could figure, um, there were a lot of trees and bushes in that location. Um, the wind uh, could have naturally uh, hampered the sound getting to the camera in time. Um, so by the time it was loud enough to have the camera start taking pictures, the rocket was completely out of the frame. I could have probably corrected for that if I had zoomed out a little bit and not been so tight on my framing. Uh, but this was my first time doing a Falcon Heavy launch and putting a camera in that particular location. So needless to say, I spent the night uh, on pins and needles wondering if the camera that was inside the fence got any better results. I'm pleased to say it did. The next morning, uh, we showed up at uh, the press site about 10 o'clock, took the buses out, Got my camera, eagerly looked at the pictures, and here are the results. They turned out beautiful. So pleased about that experience. So glad. Uh, even if I didn't get any uh, good pictures at all, I would have been happy with the experience. But I'm glad I walked away with at least one good picture of the launch. Again, very exciting experience. Um, it's been an exciting time here down at uh, Kennedy Space Center. I want to thank the uh, guest for joining me today. Uh, Jamie, if you'd like to find out more about her, just visit her site, alteredtrajectory.com. Also, rocket launch photographer Eric Kuna. You can find him on social media about everywhere. His last name is Kuna, K-U-N-A. Also, of course, want to thank the everyday astronaut Tim Dodd for joining me as well. I highly encourage you to follow him as well. If you'd like to uh, learn more, just go to his website, everydayastronaut.com. 
also like to extend thanks and a congratulations to the SpaceX team for such a smooth launch and uh, wonderful smooth activities here for the media team. I um, want to thank you for joining us as well. Uh, if you'd like to comment on today's topic, just go to our website, onlinecoffeebreak.com. Leave a comment there. You can give us a call if you'd like, 317-862-4700. We'd also love it if you'd follow us on Facebook or Instagram at Online Coffee Break. Uh, if you'd like to share this episode with a friend, we'd love that too. We'd also love it if you'd rate us on your favorite podcast application or on YouTube. Leave us a comment there. Thanks so much for joining us today. We'll see you next time. God bless.